What's going on guys? Now, you're used to us bringing you episodes of Breaking Trail where I'm catching live animals, but today, we're gonna do something a little different. We're headed off into the backcountry of Utah to search for dinosaur tracks. Now, as most of you know, I absolutely love dinosaurs, so what I'm gonna do is trade in my cowboy hat for this helmet. As we ride on these awesome Polaris razors out into the rough and rugged terrain to search out these tracks. All right, hop in guys. This is going to be awesome! In most of our adventures, we break trail on foot. However, sometimes the best way to cover many miles of distance quickly is by way of all-terrain vehicle. Today the crew and I are in Hurricane Utah, one of the best places in the West to find and get close to dinosaur tracks. This is awesome! We finally made it! Let's head back in there and find the tracks! Woo! Oh man, this is epic. Just this backdrop, I mean, you can't beat this. Oh, it is hot, it is dusty. Look at this, check this out. Can you see all the dust coming off of me? Oh yeah. Whew. It is, what do you think it is? About 100 degrees out here right now? At least. At least 100 degrees. And look at how bone dry this is, check this out. Look at that, it is just red dust. It's amazing to think that at one point in time, dinosaurs were walking right through this environment. All right, I think if we head down through this ravine here, we're gonna find some. Wow, check that out. Dinosaurs pass this way. Now, this is the whole area that we're gonna be exploring right here along the side. That's where we are. And you've got Megabnosaurus and Dilophosaurus tracks. Uh, Dilophosaurus are much larger. You see right there, huge compared to a human. I can't imagine what it would be like to have actually seen one of these walking in this environment 120 million years ago. All right, let's go find the tracks. And even though this is sloped down at one point in time before water washed through here and wore the rock away, this could have been flatter. So I'm always looking at an angle for any indentation in the rock has the potential to be a track. I mean, look how deceiving this is. That almost looks like a toe right there. Wow, I wonder if that could be a track. That's not defined enough to prove that though. All right, let's keep going. This is actually great substrate right here. Check this out. Look at this, Mark. Look at this. We just found our first set of dinosaur tracks. This is Megapnosaurus right here, a small upright walking theropod. And you can see where this animal moved right through the environment. Look at this. I'm going to step right next to the tracks. Look at that stride. Wow. That's so cool. Walking right alongside dinosaurs. You ever think you'd be able to do that, Mark? No. I never think I see a dinosaur track. I know. This is so amazing. Check this one out. That's actually really cool. So he took a real sharp turn right here and probably headed off in that direction. But if we come up here a little bit further, you've got the larger Dilophosaur tracks. Check this out. These are Dilophosaur tracks. Look how big this animal was. Here, come up to this one. You can see this one best. Look at that. Wow. Wow. What a giant. Dilophosaurus is famous because it was featured in Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park. If you remember, it was the one that had the big frill that came out and it spit the venom. Now, scientists do not believe that this dinosaur actually had those frills, but the filmmakers took the liberty of giving that dinosaur these traits to make it a little bit more scary. And look at how big they are. Now, in the movie, the Dilophosaurus they featured was much smaller than this, but you can see with my hand right down there in the track, this is not a carnivore that you would just want to stumble upon out here in the desert. How awesome is that? Did you ever think you'd be like standing right in a dinosaur track? No, I didn't. I've, uh, I've never seen dinosaur tracks before out in the wild and you can almost feel the energy of this animal when you put your hand into the track like that. 
Okay, so these tracks that we're looking at right here, anybody can come and see these. What we want to do now is actually head off into the desert and see if we can find some for ourselves. You guys ready to do this? Let's do it. It's gonna be dry, it's gonna be hot, and it's gonna be dusty, but I'm pretty confident that we're gonna find some tracks of our own. There's a hole. Oh, check this out! This could be a track. Yes! Chance, come up here, look at this. You got one here, one here, Wow, I think this is it. I think these are actual dinosaur tracks. This one right here is almost perfect. Bring your camera up. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Look at this. Look over my shoulder. Look at that, three distinct toe marks. All right, I'm gonna blow the sand out of me, ready? Yes, there's no question about it. That is an upright walking theropod, most likely a carnivore, and guessing on the size of these tracks, I would say it's probably four feet tall and close to 11 feet in length. Not an animal that you want to run into out here 65 million years ago. Holy cow, this is exciting, dude. High five. I cannot yeah. believe we actually came across tracks. And look at this, you've got one here, and look at that stride. Here to here, shorter there, plant it, and then off, and who knows, I mean, this rock could have broken apart millions of years ago, but you've got one right here, and one right there, and oh my gosh, we actually came across dinosaur tracks. Now this was objective number one find dinosaur tracks, but we found them. And the good news is that we still have a couple hours out here in the desert, and we have those razors. So, objective number two is gonna be to head to the sand dunes and really have some fun. I hope you guys are ready, because this is gonna be awesome. Yeah, come on in, come on, guys. Woo! What up? What'd you think, man? We brought you out in the field. I know, this is freaking awesome. I mean, dude, this could is you pick a better trip to come along with? Jeez. I'll tell ya, yeah, my, the walls and the editing bay do not look like these mountains. <laughs> it is amazing out here. I got the whole flip, but that was gnarly. Ouch. You all right? Well, guys, rule number one, if you flip your razor, it's always to keep your arms inside. Thankfully, I'm walking away from yet another one. Oh, man. I was barely even turning. I don't know how that thing flipped. But it, uh, yeah, I flipped it. You know, if I'm not falling off of a cliff, I'm flipping a vehicle. That's why we just usually don't let me do these things. <laughs> the good lesson here is that if you do roll a machine like this, you just hold on to the steering wheel, keep your hands inside. You're always wearing your seatbelt, always wearing the helmet. Uh, and so far I'm walking away from this one completely unscathed. Uh, my back and neck might be a little sore tomorrow, but no broken bones, no stitches. We're having to bungee cord the door shut because that's broken. I cracked the top of it. And unfortunately, I may have just bought the Brave Wilderness Team a razor because this is gonna be an expensive one to fix. <laughs> My bad. Woo, all right, Coyote, well. That's one way to do it in Utah. Yeah, I'd say it was an extremely successful day. We found dinosaur tracks, that was awesome. Then we came out here to the dunes to 
rip up the sand with our razors, and I kind of rolled mine. But the good news is, no cuts, no broken bones, and yet again, I walk away from another breaking trail mishap. All I can say is that Utah is unbelievably epic. Yes, sir. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. Always wear your helmet. Ugh. We'll see you on the next adventure. Here we go. Flipping my razor was a close call. Make sure to go back and watch the time I missed a jump and fell off a cliff in Arizona. Oh. Yikes. And don't forget, subscribe to the Brave Wilderness channel so you can join me and the crew on the next location.